So, 21 years ago, there was a 12-year-old little boy who was very fatigued, peed a lot, and was very thirsty, like, all the time. And this worried his family about what was going to be inevitable. And so they took him to the doctors, and they, uh, what they feared most came true. He was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And this was going to change the course of his entire life because now he was going to have to monitor if he, and his blood sugars like all the time. And what happens in type 1 diabetes is that the insulin in your body isn't being produced. And insulin is very important for your body because it's what uh, supplies your cells in your body with the required energy it needs to function. And how this correlates to diabetics is that you have unstable blood sugar levels, you'll run high, you'll run low, and so that messes with insulin production. And you're probably wondering what's the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Type 1 t diabetes is just a mutation in your DNA and it's just going to happen like you can't fix it. But type 2 diabetes is caused by obesity and instead of your body not producing insulin at all, it's just like resistant to it. And the boy's name was Timothy Jason Trinkle, also known as my big cousin TJ. Okay, so when he was a little boy and 12 years old, he had to now prick his finger and test his blood sugar to see if he was running high or running low. And if he wanted to get a cookie and eat a cookie, he would have to give himself a shot of insulin so that it would correlate to the new amount of sugar that's in his body. And because uh, he wouldn't want to run high on blood sugar. And what happens when you run high is that you get fatigued, headaches, blurry vision, and if you get too high, there can be long-term organ damage. And so this technology of pricking your finger and testing your blood sugar and then uh, measuring the amount of insulin and putting it into your body, that's because of biomechanical engineering. <clears throat> this is TJ in high school. The same routine went on day to day and the main focus was make sure his blood sugar was stable. And instead of worrying about running high because of a cookie, he now had to worry about running low because now he's working out because now he was on the water polo team and the swim team at Rancho High School. And the difference between running high and running low is significant because running low, instead of having long-term organ damage, you, uh, you have short-term and it can um, uh, affect you even severely. And so when he would work out, a lot of you guys are athletes, right? And when you work out, you burn calories. And calories are, uh, they correlate with your sugars. And because you burn carbohydrates um, when you're working out, and the carbohydrates are your sugars in your body, and that's what provides you with the energy you need to work out. Well, after you work out, you supplement yourself so that you restore the sugars that you used when you uh, burned off. Well, TJ, he already runs low. Like, that's his thing. Like, he runs low on blood sugar. And so he would have to supplement himself, like, in the middle of a workout to make sure he wouldn't run low because that would, like, be way worse than running high. And we're just grateful in my family that he never ran low, like, at a workout or anything because how would someone know how to help him if they weren't also a diabetic or, like, his family and knew how to help him? And what happens when a diabetic runs low on blood sugar is that you, uh, they get dizzy and they enter a men uh, an altered mental state, which then can lead them into slipping into a coma. And if they stay in the coma too long, there's instances where they can't wake up and they ultimately die, or when they do wake up, they have neurological um, deficiencies and it just messes them up like every time it happens. And we're just grateful that never happened when he was in high school working out and stuff. Well, uh, it's too late to like be thankful that it never happened in high school because what we feared most came true a couple years ago. Um, it was only a few years ago when my cousin 
got, um, he was sleeping and he just got really thirsty so he woke up and he walked to the kitchen to get a drink of water and then he was down on the ground, he was passed out and he couldn't wake up. No one heard until his wife kind of woke up because she heard the sound he made when he hit the tile but she like if she wasn't there it would have been bad because she immediately called 911 and the paramedics were working on my cousin within like 10 minutes trying to wake him up and it took about an hour to wake him up i just remember being like 12 years old and getting uh woken up by my mom in the middle of the night because um, she got a phone call from my aunt who um no not my aunt my cousin's wife because she like my cousin wasn't waking up, and we were just told that the paramedics were working on him at that very moment. And we couldn't go see him, though, because they live in Arizona. And so they brought him back to consciousness eventually, but, and there was no neurological damage, thank goodness, but that didn't happen once. That happened two more times within the same year. And that's because when, with the old, um, technology, you would have to voluntarily prick your finger to, te uh, to test your blood sugar to see if you're running high or low. But when you're sleeping, are you going to wake up and be like, oh, I have to test my blood sugar to see if I'm running low? No, he ran low when he was in the middle of sleeping and um, then he passed out. And so after this happened for the third time, I uh, was little and I was like, I'm going to research how I can help my cousin and if there's any way we can prevent this. And so I came across a company called Medtronics who um, created this artificial pan uh, pancreas called the Minimed 530G. And this pretty much is just an external sensor uh, uh, on one side of your abdomen that's constantly checking your blood sugar every five minutes. And on the other side, there's an insulin pump um, external to your body that will um, send a signal to see if you're running low or running high. And if you're running low, it'll send a signal to your phone and wake the person up. Well, this would uh, help my cousin because it would wake him up in the middle of the night if he was running low. And this is Amelia McLeiber. She was diagnosed at seven years old, and she's now 11. And this video, she describes how it has helped her life it has made her life easier and worry-free because she doesn't have to stop what she's doing in the middle of her day and prick her finger to make sure she's okay. And it's also less painful because you don't have to shoot yourself with a shot every time you need to have insulin because the pump's already, already attached to your abdomen. And these are my, my cousin TJ's two little boys, nine-year-old Nathan and two-year-old Christian. I love these boys so much and they love their dad and he's a great dad but can you imagine if these two boys were left fatherless if their dad couldn't wake up from a diabetic induced coma I can't I wouldn't be a, I wouldn't have the heart to tell them tell them that he died I wouldn't be able to tell myself he died because of that and my cousin's on the list to get the mini med, so we're just praying he gets it sooner than later so that he doesn't um, pass out again. Thank you.